Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, and uh, thank you for tuning in to another amazing My Python Auto Rigging tutorial, uh, part six, if I'm not mistaken. Um, today, I want to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, first, I want to talk about how to add a custom attribute to any object in Maya and how to connect uh, an attribute. So, for example, you have object A. Uh, which position can change the rotation of object B by connecting those uh, attributes together. Then I want to talk about uh, adding constraints using Python. Um, it's really not that difficult. And then I want to talk about how to add uh, shading nodes. So, for example, what you uh, usually do in Maya, you would go to the Windows and then Node Editor, add a node, and then start manipulating your know, stuff. You can also do this with Python, and I'm going to show you how. So, let's just dive in. So this is what we had last time, right? So we started working on the controllers. Uh, I finished it uh, almost, not entirely done yet, but almost. And at first I want to show you how to add a custom attribute. So what you would usually do is you create a controller, for example, then you would go to edit and then add attribute, type in all the stuff here, for example, the long name, text, and then you send it to float, for example. And then you give a value of 5, let's do a uh, 0, and then do 100 here, and then you add it, right? This is how you uh, usually do it. Um, but I want to show you how to do it in code, because it's a little bit easier. Um, for example, I want to have a custom attribute that can actually control the twist value of my IK, like this one over here. So I can just um, have a value that I can uh, control the amount of twist in my wrists or in my arm, same for the, the leg as well, so I can just have one that will actually control the bending of my leg. Um, so let's just dive in straight away. So the first thing I want to do is add my custom attribute and I'm going to find my create wrists function here um, and then the position of where you add that line of code is actually really important. Um, First try here, right, on line 40, uh, but it didn't work out at all. Uh, for some reason, it lost the uh, the object that it wanted to add it to, the attribute. Uh, I tried finding the attribute by saying based on ls and then storing it in a variable and then adding it, it didn't work either. So my solution is was to actually uh, do it straight after the creation of my controller in this case. So in this case, on line 39, I'm going to add my code here. I'm going to say here base dot add attribute, and then you get a whole bunch of tags that you can add, or flags in this case. Um, you can add a short name. For example, I'm going to call this PD. And you can have the long name. The long name actually shows up in your attribute editor. In this case, I'm going to call this elbow PV. Now, note that I added a underscore, and because you cannot add spaces in your strings. I'm going to say again, you cannot add spaces. It will not work at all. So next up would be saying, okay, what kind of type of attribute are we added? Um, in this case, I want to make sure that it's a double because I want to use uh, decimal numbers. So attribute type is a double. So this means we can have like 0 0.1 instead of a, a whole number. Uh, we can now add a uh, decimal number. And then the default value in this case, I want to set it to be 0, like this. And the minimum value, uh, well, since we can go negative as well, I want to set it to, set it to minus 100. And the max value of 100. Now the next line is actually super important. If you don't add it, it will not show up in your attribute editor. And it's called, on a channel box, it's called keyable is true. So without this line, it will not show up in your channel box or attribute editor. So make sure that you add the keyable equals true. I'm going to copy this to my other wrist. So here, now we can start working on our constraints, right? So I'm going to compile this real fast, see if it works. It does, and then I'm going to, yeah, I can find it, there it is. Okay, I'm going to hit controls. Now, in my controller here, you can see it now I've got an elbow PV, elbow bolt actually in this case. Then I can now uh, change to a certain value that I want to. But it's there, right? So it's there. So now, our next step would be to actually connect the attributes with something else. You can actually start using them. Uh, so I created a class called constraints.py. But now we have nothing in it yet. So the first thing I want to talk about now is, are the constraints. So, so to do left and right. 
Um, you have a point constraint, point constraint, parent constraint, full text constraint. So what I want to do, right, is that I have my controller here. Control both the IK handles. I can move the IK handle, but I can also rotate the actual hand joint, the wrist joint, right? So that means I need to add a point constraint, I need to add a orient constraint. So to do this, I'm first to find the actual objects. I'm going to find my left wrist controller. And then again, we just use the base of ls, in this case, control underscore l wrist. I want to make sure that I get the actual object and not the shape. So I say type is transform. Next up, I want to find my ik. Capital uh, is again based on ls ik l arm. In this case, we don't need to declare the type because there's only one ik, there's no uh, shape over it. Same goes for joints, and then also want to find the actual joints, right? So again, rig l uh, wrist. Now, I want to do the same thing for my right hand as well. Might as well call this straight up, right? And do this again. Let's just change the prefix to R. Okay. okay, so we now have the actual objects. Now we can start adding the constraints. I might as well do it here. Uh, so, the first one I want to do is I want to constrain my left wrist to my IK so that I want my wrist control to control the actual IK uh, position of the IK handle. So, you say based on point constraint, kind of here, point constraint. Then, okay, the first one is the object that will control the other object. So, in this case, I want to have my left wrist control. And I want it to manipulate the wrist IK. The next one is MO equals true, and MO stands for maintain offset. So, that even if there is a slight offset in position, it doesn't jump to that position. It just keeps the current uh, offset of those objects. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my point constraint. So, right. so again, we have my controller. In this case, I wanted to control my left wrist joint here. And then again, maintain offset is true, just in case something weird happens. That's it. Right, so you can now copy paste this as well. You can do this now for the right hand as well. One, ten last there. So just again, R. R. Of course, this is not. This is going to work. Yeah, this is going to work. File this real fast. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go to my constraints and constraints. I've already added it. Now my controller here will move the pivot both the IK and rotate my wrist. It's perfect, right? Okay, I'm gonna undo it. Next up, I wanna connect my custom attribute, this one, over here to my IK twist. Um, here over here. And it's actually not difficult, you just say, based on connect attribute, like this, and then you say, okay, what do you wanna connect? In this case, I want my control uh, left wrist dot elbow pv, right, the one that we just added, and then I want this to connect to my ik, looks like o e, um, well you can actually just type the name of the object, so ik l arm, and then the twist property. Again, it doesn't have capitals, even though it says that it has capitals in the channel box, but the actual variable does not have capitals. So the elbow PV, the one which is made, right? The controller, so this one over here, the long name. And then the twist value of that one. So I'm going to do the same thing here, copy paste it. Paste it. Okay. And change the, again, stuff over here. And then we test it again. Save it, compile it, see what happens. So. The constraints, I don't get any errors, which is good. And then I'm going to just see if this works, and there you go. See that it now actually controls the elbow. Perfect. So you add a point constraint, you add a constraints, and then you connect attributes 
you can just uh, make a link between the elbow griefy attribute with the twist attribute. That's what's what we're doing so far. Okay, now you see that I have my twist joints here, I have four of them. Um, for a good reason. I said three of them. It's weird. It's got four of them. It's pretty matter. Um, actually three of them, yeah. So I want to add is a multiply divide node to this. What you would usually do is you have a uh, the control over here, right? When I rotate this to the left on a y axis, then this joint here should rotate like uh, for my seventy five percent, or fifty percent, and this one twenty five percent, right? Um, so what you would usually do is you would go to your node editor, you would add your control to the actual object here, and then you would add a shading node. In this case, it's called multiply divide. It's it. Etc. Etc. Right. This is tedious. This is very time consuming. So we want to make it a little bit faster. But first, let's have a look at the multiply divide one over here. Uh, when you look in the edge editor itself, you can see there are operations that you can add. So you have the no operation multiply, you have the divide, and you have the power operation. Now this is a list, right? So they they have numbers assigned to it. So Operation zero would be no operation. Operation one would be multiply. Two would be divide. Three would be power. Then you have the input, and then you have input two. In this case, for the input two, I want to use my actual value that it's going to divide with or multiply with. And the input one would be the actual um, rotation of my controller. So you get the input one multiplied by input two in this case. Um, so let's start doing this. So first, I want to make sure that we let me actually check to see if we have a forehand twist. It could be that you don't have one in your rig. In this case, I want to check to see if it actually exists. So I'll twist zero. Because we also have target zero. So if it actually exists, do something. If it doesn't exist, don't do anything anymore. So next thing would be to find all the twist joints. So I'll twist joints, joints, joints. Again, do the same thing based on ls. Let me find the rip l on twist underscore decimal on the asterisk. So find everything with that uh, prefix. And then, we need, and then we need to create a for loop, right? So I want to go through all my on twist joints. And for every joint, I want to add a shading node or multiply the byte node. So I'm going to create a, again, a inuit loop. I'll in enumerate so in this case by the twist joints. Which I'm going to type because this is not going to work. Joints, there we go. Okay. So we will work for the amount of uh, R twist joints that exists. So for every single one of them, I want to make a multiply the five nodes. I'm going to say here list mult nodes or multiply or whatever you want to call it. Just type it out here in the Let's multiply, and you can say base dot shading node, and this will add a shading node. Now you can you have to define the define yeah what type of node you want to add. In this case, I want to add a multiply multiply Jesus multiply divide with this. So this will add a multiply divide node. Next up, you have to type in this case as utility. Equals true, and um, because you also have like shading nodes that can actually change the uh, with Maya renders in the objects. So that could be something like a blend node or a, fr a Fresnel node or linear gradient node, whatever, right? And then you want to name it so it looks a little prettier. And then L on twist nodes, um, and then I'm gonna add this the number. Like this. Okay, so let's just see if it actually works. I'm going to hit comp compile and then we're going to do this again. Then we're going to add constraints. Right? Okay, you can see here right, it actually adds it. I want to show you that you can find it in your, your code line as well. So by default, you can't see it. What you have to do is you have to turn off the AG objects only, and then you can see it will not appear in your list. So we have node 0, node 1, node 2. Beautiful, right? Okay. I believe this, I'm going to turn that on. Well, by default, it is actually set to multiply, but I'm, I want to set it again manually. So I'm going to say here, just multiply. This is perfect. Holy shit. 
which is tackled on. Just multiply right the actual number. So we so we need to set an attribute for this. I'm gonna say here um you can set base dot set attribute in this case we just multiply and then plus because it will turn it into a string then dot operation so the one that we just showed you right with the uh, no operation multiply divide the power and I want to set the operation to one which is multiply so I just want to hard code it in there that it will always be multiply and not by a random trick of Maya being weird it's just to divide because then everything will break and you don't want that so Set the operation to one, right? Now here comes the cool part because now we're going to set the input value of our multiplication number, right? So it's it's um, it could be one, it could be zero point seven five or zero point five, whatever, depending on how many joints you have. So again, I want to set an attribute with this. And in this case, I want to set the again the wrist multiply variable, and then I want to put this in my oh, the input to y so in the input two and then specifically in the y slot and now I'm gonna set the actual value so now we're gonna do some math so I want to set it to one minus and then I want to divide one by the amount of joints that I have right so I want to make this that if you add four twist joints then it will actually multiply by 0 0.75 0 0.5 etc if you have uh, 10, then it should be 0 0.9, 0 0.8, etc. Right? So I want to do the one divided and then by the amount of joints that we have. So you can do this by just typing LEN. So for the length of a list, in this case, the list is the L twist joints. Joints. Like this. So it will, it will be 1 minus divided, or oh, 1 minus 1 divided by the amount of joints that we have. In this case, we have. Four, so it's going to be uh, zero point seven five, right? Well, actually, it's going to be three. So zero point six six, zero point three three, etc. Okay. So, but I want this number to increase over time. So the first one should be like zero point. I'm going to pick each number. First one's going to be zero point two, and the next one should be zero point four, and then zero point six, zero point eight, etc. So we actually need to add a multiplication here. In this case, it's going to be i plus 1. y plus 1? Well, we have to start uh, the formula with 0, right? So it's going to be um, multiplied by 0, which will be the actual value will be 1. I mean, 1 minus something multiplied by 0 is going to be 0. That's why it's going to be 1, right? So there will be 1 minus 1 divided by the length of joints and multiplied by 1 in this case. So it's going to be 0 0.25. Okay, so we're now going to set the input of our joint. So I'm going to again connect an attribute like this, and I want to connect my wrist rotation of my controller dot rotate y in this case, and I want to set it to the input of my multiply divide now. So we're going to grab this line over here over here, and then we're going to add again the string. I, then I want to set it to the input 1i. So we're going to use that number from the uh, controller, multiply that with the number that we get over here, right? Because this is going to set in the other one. Okay. So we're going to grab it. We're going to grab the uh, output now. So we get the input now. Also, we set the output. Output, no, it's output. Again, we're going to do the same thing, right? For place of connect attributes, and then save value. So the left out is node, and then same thing for string i plus. In this case, output y, and I want to connect this to the actual joint itself. So in this case, it's going to be rick l arm twist underscore plus string i again. Plus and then rotate. I know it's x, so I'm going to say rotate x. So what's going to happen is right, it's, it's going to grab this value for the, ro for the rotation. Let's get y. It's going to multiply that with a certain value, and that and that value will be rotating the joint on the x 
x-axis. I'm done with this one. X-axis. That's that's what we're doing right now. Okay. So let's have a quick look. Let's compile this and see if it works. Here, add constraints. They're done. They're here. You can see. Let's see, right? So if I now rotate this, my joints should also rotate. They do. And they should rotate less. You can see right the fall off happening in the joint rotation. This is beautiful. This is what we want to have. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to undo this again. I'm just going to cut paste this to the other side so I can keep this part over here. I can even keep this part over here as well if I want to. Um, yeah, I think we can even keep this. So let's do the rig on the right twist joint. Same thing. Um, rig L on twists. Asterix. Um, let's do this here. So let's do. Uh, no, actually, yeah, let's do it with this. And then I'm going to copy paste pretty much everything here. I'm just going to change these real fast. Control, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. This should be fine. Okay, I'm going to copy paste this. I see my twist joints on the left side are almost the same on the right side, so I'm going to copy paste it really easy. And turn this into the right. And this into the right. Same thing, so the operation doesn't change. Nothing really changes except for this one. And last one. I think. Let's have a look. So again, take constraints and see the other one works as well. Let's rotate this and there we go. Perfect. Here's what we're looking for. Absolutely perfect. Okay. So this is how you add a shading node. So you add a shading node here. In this case, I want to make sure that it's actually used as a utility. And then give it a name and then set the operation. Set the input values. In this case, the number and then the rotation of my wrist is the input one. We value here by two and then we multiply one by two, input them, and then we just connect them and that's pretty much what we're doing. Right? Okay. So next up is fixing our clusters here. By default, right, the controls spines are not connected to the cluster at all, so we have to do this manually. So we're gonna go here, we can tap here, and now we're gonna first find all my clusters. So I'll paste on LS. Again, same thing we've done a million times right now. Cluster on the score. Okay. Make sure that we get the actual objects. Same thing for the spy controls. We want to save them here. I guess it's all our caps. Spy. Yep, there you go. Same thing. There you go. Okay. So. What we're going to do now is again we're going to go through all our clusters here. So I'm going to say J, C L this is cluster, and uh, I think enumerate clusters. Clusters. So I want to check to see uh, what I want to do right now is um, if my J value is bigger than zero, then I want to pair my cluster to a spy controller. If it's zero, then it should be paired to the actual pelvis. So I'm not going to say here if j is bigger than zero, right? And then parent this. Let's get cl, the one which is defined here. Uh, and then I want to do this to an actual spine cluster. So in this case, it would be spine control. And then j minus one. There you go. So and if it's if J is zero, then it should be parented. The C L should be parented to the thing we also just to say here control underscore this. There you go. Okay, let's have a quick look. 
See what I did right, and then I've got the echo straight. I don't get any weird errors, so that's always good. And then we just do this perfect, 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 and this one as well. Beautiful. Nice. Let's undo constraints. There we go. Yeah, now I, you can see what I just checked to see if this one is working. This one doesn't work yet, so I'm going to do the same thing. Here we're going to connect the attribute of my. I think it's Y value or X, Y. It's, yeah, so both. Well, you, you just add a point constraint to this joint, right? So it's the same thing here. I'm just going to show you real fast. I'm going to move on to the fingers, so I'm going to grab my constraint for that one, cool. So it's just adding a point constraint here. So what you can say here is, uh, you can based on orient constraint. Orient constraint. And then I want to find an object, so left call. And then with the actual joint, I think you can do that like this as well. Right click. And then we do this. So this is the other way of doing it. Then we'll look at the bad place you want to, and don't look like an idiot. And it looks fine. So now this one will actually control this one as well. So you can also just type in the actual name of the objects and then it will also do it for you. So you can now copy paste this again. One, four, there you go. Same thing here. There you go. So I want to have a quick look at the fingers. This is, this is fun. Um, so what I want to happen, right? Uh, I've only got one um, finger control because I don't want to have like a jungle of controls here. But like, you can add one for every single joint. That will work fine. It just gets a little bit messy, so I just want to have one, right? So when I wrote this on the Z value, I want to get all my fingers here and have them create a nice little curve like this. But I also want to be able to rotate them like this as well. In this case, just this. You can also have that, that finger spread as well. So I want to do it in multiple ways. So it's actually not that difficult uh, once you get it. Uh, so let's do this right now. So first thing again, right? I need to find all my fingers. But I don't know how many fingers I have. I don't know how many fingers I've set if, uh, in my photo reader. So I need to pass through that information in here. So in here, I want to make sure that in my button, I actually have an int value somewhere that can actually pass through that finger count. And then we'll do this one. So, like this. So this should now pass through the finger count to my constraints class. Now I can actually start doing a little more interesting stuff. Now I can say, for example, here, um, let's just do a simple follow up again. In this case, I'm going to go for K because, because I've used I, I've used J. I'm going to use K. Um, in range, right? Um, in this case, it's going to be zero and the finger comes like this. Okay. So next, I want to find all my fingers in this case. So I'm going to call left all fingers because I'm going to have some tabs here. And you can see there it is. All fingers is again based on LS. Same thing, same story. Rick L finger, right? And now it gets cool. I'm going to get an underscore and then again, I'm going to say here now the K uh, plus underscore asterisk. So it will look for all fingers, like for example, finger 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, um, finger 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, right? So this is how you actually find all the fingers with that uh, belong to that finger. So I'm going to copy, well, do not add a package. <laughs> there you go. So same thing here. So this will find finger 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, then to 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, or 3, 0, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I just want to have my object, my joint, rotate on the y-axis, right, so I can actually have the finger spread. This is the easy part. So I'm going to set here, I'll, again, I'm going to connect an attribute, so I'm going to say you can connect this attribute. So I want to connect my control finger, so in this case finger, underscore, again, k, um, oh, 
plus then we'll rotate Y. I want to connect this with my fingers, or in this case all fingers. Uh, zero, since it's a list, um, plus the Y. Now again, since this is a list, right? Uh, we could, I could probably also use this type choice from here. It's not sure. No, this is not going to work. Is it though? Interesting. And let's, not, let's just keep this way. I'll just figure out later on. It is going to work. Yeah. So, let's do the same thing here. And then, right. That's fine. That's fine. No, well, this should be hard. Okay, let's quickly this. Oh, I got a syntax in there. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so quick look. I think I just undid the thing right here. Let's add constraints. Look at the errors. Beautiful. So, if you now do this, then you get to see there's a nice favorite spread. Save for this one. Perfect. And undo it. Beautiful. Okay. Next up, though, I want to create the actual finger curl. So when I move the, um, the object, then it will actually curl up the entire finger. So I'm going to make a form in a form. So I want to say L in this case. Um, and then thing, finger. And enumerate, in this case, uh, all the fingers. Because now I want to go through all the fingers that I have. And then I'm kind of going to connect an attribute. So there's a connect attribute. Um, so if you here, so control L finger oh. plus in this case string L but you rotate set and then I'm gonna click all my fingers, so I'm gonna just say finger here plus dot rotate Z. Yeah, that's it. This will create the actual curl, right? Because we go through all the fingers that we have. It belongs to that thing, and then we can all connect them to the rotation value of my control. Let me show you what this what it looks like. I think we can even leave this here, which is going to copy this one. Um, no. I'm going to click and copy this, which I ask if you don't mind. Uh, so this would be. And we're going to change this to the thing, actually. And this to our finger, a little bit more. Overview and then yeah, this one. Yeah. We'll compile this, this looks fine. I'm gonna check it again. I could straight, there we go. And now if I rotate this, nothing happens. If I think I got an error. Yeah. I did. Rotate set only as I think I'm cool. That's fine. Let me just check it again. Oh. That is weird. It should actually. I'm not doing this thing right now. Oh. I don't have any control. Wait a second, this is going completely wrong. <laughs> this is one of have the. Yeah. Try to find an action instance. But. Finger plus. No, no finger. That is odd. That is odd. So there's an issue here. I think I fucked that up here. And this is the first finger that I'm going to find. I'm going to figure out this later on. Um, that's kind of weird. Let's see if I can check out later on. Yeah, let's fix it. I'll just pause my code on GitHub as usual. Yeah, no, I have to be going to. Weird. I'm going to fix that later on. Okay. Anyway. 
I'll just post this on, on GitHub um, see if I can figure this out. But it's the same thing for everything else. So for example as well, I've got a neck here. I can also now connect this strong neck here to my actual joint here for this one. Same thing, so I'm going to grab this to show how to do this with fast one more time. And then we're going to call it a day for today. Uh, so I'm going to do it here as well. Again, I'm going to add a point straight. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do like this. And then what do you want to draw? In this case, I'm just going to do my neck. Start here. There you go. So well, now this will actually add a constraint to my chart here as well. So I'm going to do the same thing for my head. Build the same thing here. So this is how you build up the entire stuff. Um, and next time, I think we're going to finalize it. So everything else is the same, right? You can just do the same thing here for the feet as well. It's just a point constraint again. Same stuff over and over and over again. Uh, so I think next time we're going to work on the UI of our main tool. And then I think we're going to finalize it. So. Um, I hope you had fun. Um, I apologize for the film is not working, but I'll figure it out and post it on GitHub. So um, I hope you uh, hope to see you again next time.